the 2011 Stanley Cup preview show for the semifinals. That's round two for you. All right, what do we got? We got the number one seed, Washington Capitals, and the number five seed, Tampa Bay Lightning. Well, this is going to be an interesting round because uh, we got a lot going on. We got Ovechkin, who's been scoring a lot of goals lately, and Sam Coast, he's even had a big night. Yeah. So uh, we got those two going. Going to give our players a watch. Personally, I like Sam Coast, he's been good. But I'm going to go Ovechkin versus Rollison simply based on Rollison's play in the first round versus Pittsburgh. Who you got? I'm saying Ovechkin and Stamkos. Uh, both of them great players on the team. True. Stamkos has picked up a little bit. O- Ovi's been playing great. Yeah, he's, he's got the goals. He's got them. Can we see Stamkos filling Crosby's role of being Ovechkin's main foil? We'll see in this series. All right. We got the second seed Philadelphia Flyers and the number three seed Boston Bruins. My players to watch for that are going to be Daniel Briere and Tim Thomas. Yeah, I agree. Daniel Briere has the most points since the lockout and playoffs. And Tim Thomas, the Vezina Trophy finalist, been playing great all season. Played great in the last couple of games to Nick for the Montreal, against Montreal. And it's, that's basically, I think, I agree with you on that. That's true. Uh, all right, for the West, number one seed Vancouver Canucks, who had a hard battle with the Chicago Blackhawks. No one's surprised by that one. They'll be taking on the number five seed, Nashville Predators. Ooh, I'm surprised they got there. Nashville, they're good, but I, I thought they had it. Yeah, they had it, but I mean, when you have a Norris candidate on your blue line, you have a Vezina finalist in your net. Pretty it's much. It's hard to stop. <laughs> you got to do what you coach of the year. And a coach of the year. And a coach of the year. Oh, candidate. Wow. Yeah, three candidates right there. That's Trophies. Insane. and You can't beat that early. You can't. Didn't the, the GM get nominated for something? Yeah, G- GM too, GM of the year. Nashville, this is all coming to light. I didn't even think about this until just out. Uh, we Nashville got them. was finally on the spot. Everyone was just like, oh, it's Nashville, it's old Tennessee. Figure out them. Now they're... I wouldn't have gave them that much credit, but looking at it now, I, this is way more intense than I thought it would be. But my players to watch are going to be Dan Sedin and that best in the finals, Pekka Rennie. Yeah, I said the same thing there. It's a big one. Uh, all right. San Jose Sharks, number two seed, versus the number three seed, veteran, Detroit Red Wings. I got Thornton and Datsu. Yeah, that's, that's good. I'll say the same thing. Also, I want to think about Howard and Anthony Niemi. Both of them can be kind of shaky at times. That is true. But in this quicker every now and then, once a game maybe, i say both of them let the bag go once a game. All right. But they both need to step up if they want to win. True. I'm going to bag in for the winners of these series. I'm going to say, and this is a clean sweep of six games, Washington in six, Philadelphia in six, Vancouver in six, Detroit in six. Those are my winners. I'm, I'm going to say Washington in six also. I'm saying Philly in seven, though. I think Boston could... Good argument. And they won't be finished last year. That's this also... Year. They I'm more saying Philly in seven, better. though. Vancouver in five. Last game was kind of flat with the Predators. I'm not sure if they can pick it up or not. They should be able to, but Vancouver looked good last night. They were. And the Trump saying Detroit in six, too. All right. We got ourselves pretty much in full agreement on that one. All right. All right. Our top story is going into this one. I said this in the first round. Caps goaltending. There was Holtby, Varlamov, Norbert. We all knew Norbert was going to start it, but we saw the possibility that another goal was going to be in there. He ended up taking the job. It's all his. He did great in the first round. Yeah, the first round he stopped 140 of 148 shots, opposed to 1.3 goals in his average and a 0.4, 6 save percentage. Uh, he had a shutout in game two, True. almost won in game five, about half a minute left in the game, just a full shutout. He's won 15 playoff series in a row, and he's only played 15 playoff series. That is crazy. Speaking of Golden, he'll be facing from the other end of the ice, Dwayne Rollison, who did he did pretty good versus Pittsburgh, but let's keep in mind, Pittsburgh was losing all their big guns. They didn't have them. Crosby was out. Malkin was out. Stahl, who's usually a third-line center, he was forced into the first line. So Rollison looked good considering the circumstances, but Washington doesn't have that problem. All the big guns are there. All the big guns are shooting. And not many know this, but Rollison, he faced a lot of shots. He faced more shots than any goaltender in the first round. And that's going to suck for him because Ovi shoots pucks like no other. And he's got the accuracy that Pittsburgh forwards didn't have. He looked good in the first round, but I think he's going to get lit up. And the defense was already exposed versus Pittsburgh. Washington's going to expose him even more. Yeah, with Ovechkin and Backstrom and Simmons, Volson's 41 years old. 
yeah. to keep that up. He's not going to be able to keep it up. The, the, the Capitals are way more high octane than the Penguins were. So uh, it's going to take some, uh, some willpower to stop that puck from crossing that line. And I don't think it is that she's going to be able to keep it up for another round. And that was seven yeah. games. And it seemed like the last time, I think it was the last time the Caps played to play the Biden, they were in his head. True. Hendrick, Hendrick just ran him over. And he punched him back of the head. And then Golson's out of his game. The Caps came off his game. He's, when he's off his game, he is terrible. True. All right. We're going to move on. we got Chris Pronger coming back for the Flyers. Now, I thought this was going to be a big deal, but he came back in the last game versus uh, Buffalo. Last two games. Last two games versus Buffalo, game but he only had power play minutes. He didn't play any regular shifts or short any. He was only on the power play. question is, is he going to be in there full-time now, or what's going to happen with Pronger? In game six, I, I didn't like him. He played power play. I was it. He wouldn't shoot puck at all. He didn't. He you could tell. He, he looked like a fake, sla- he wasn't gonna fake shoot slap shot and passed it. He didn't know what's happening. The seventh game, he shot a little more. I like the way he shot through some of the shot selections, and he sure. think one may let to a goal. But if, if they know he's going to be faking shots and getting passes through, they're not even going to try to block the shot. But that could end up hurting his hands. His hands better. Hopefully it is. They, they've had a few days off. It was the last game. Last. Oh, wow. It was. It was probably Sunday. It was on NBC, so it yeah, was, it was I, I probably was, a Sunday game. It was Sunday, I think. So, they had some time to rest. I think Pronger is probably going to come back close to his usual self. Alright, staying on the Flyers, they're goaltending. Oh, I thought the Capitals had an interesting situation. The Flyers, they had Michael Layden backing up Boucher. No, no, I take that back. Boucher was backing up Bobrovsky, the rookie who they read all season. And now Bobrovsky, from the last two games, he was sitting up in the press box, and Leighton was backing up Boucher. Boucher let him a few soft goals. Leighton got in. Little do people know, Boucher got all the wins. Didn't Bobrovsky back up the seventh game? He did. And Leighton yeah. was up in the press box. But even regardless of whether Boucher started the game or not, he got all four wins in the series. Yeah. So whether he was pulled and came in, he got the wins. So... I think it's safe to say Boucher is going to be the starter. The question is who's going to be the backup in case he lets in a few more soft goals. Yeah, I figured Boucher is going to start as soon as he said that. I think it was the sixth game, maybe, or the fifth game. He said that loss was all on me. Yeah, you knew he was going to come back he's, hard. As soon as he said that, he was coming back hard, and you knew he was going to give him a chance to if he admitted that. We're going to stick with the goaltending and go to Roberto Luongo, finally getting past Chicago. Barely. Barely getting past Chicago. It was an overtime winner by, I want to say, Burroughs? Burroughs and turnover. Bad horrible turnover. Chicago. It was kind of like the, the Rangers play when Simmons scored the overtime winner goal. Try to dump it out, it doesn't get out. Yeah. Yeah. Sucks for them. But Luongo did save the game, though. And he did. Patrick Sharp had a cut up in the power play. Uh, a good penalty. Was it Burroughs up penalty? Burroughs up penalty holding. Burroughs up penalty holding. True. In the, in the beginning of overtime. And Lou made a great slide across the crease, post to post, to rob Patrick Sharp. That big frame of them out there. Because Sharp, he, he'll snipe it. He'll snipe it and win a game for you. And he's done it before in the playoffs. All right. Henrik Zetterberg will be returning for game one for Detroit when they take on San Jose Sharks. That's big. That's man. big. They've done great. They swept, they swept Phoenix. So it's not that they necessarily need him, but throwing him in there... San Jose is going to be having That's just playing great as it is. Already. With Hank back. That's, that's great for them. You can't deny it. That's, that's it for that. That's, uh, that's why I'm going to pick San Jose to drop that one in six games. Detroit's moving on. All right, moving on. Uh, I saw this on a, a forum, and I, I agree with every, every single part of it. And uh, I'll, I'll quote it as it's written. If you're up 3-1, and this is concerning Pittsburgh and uh, Tampa Bay Lightning in round one. It says, if you're up 3-1 heading back home for Game 5 and you end up losing the series, you don't belong in the second round. If your goalie gives up a grand total of one goal in Game 7 at home and you can't win, you don't belong in the second round. All of that said, however, don't get too cocky, don't get terribly cocky, Tampa. From what I saw, even the depleted Penguins owned you 5-on-5 five five for the majority of tonight's game and the series. A, healthy, a fully healthy Pens team would have most certainly shredded you in far fewer in seven games. I completely agree with that. It sucks that they had the 3-1 series lead and still lost, but going in facing the Capitals, if they can't score goals 5-on-5, even with their power play, their power play was good in the first round, but 
if, if you can't score five on five, you can't lean on your power play that much. I mean, look at the Caps PK and the Caps defense overall. That's true. Even the Penguins even came in with one of the out, arguably the top three, one of the top three defensive cores in the league, and the number one penalty killing unit. And the power play for Tampa Bay still got through them. So you can't you can't lean on your power play that much. Special teams plays a huge role in the playoffs, but you can't depend on it completely. I agree. The award nominees for this year. This is an interesting for you. I'm going to jump right to the top of it, the Hart Trophy. I had Fleury winning it over Perry and Taves. NHL, they completely disagree with me. Their nominees were Perry, Sedin, and St. Louis. I, I, I don't see how that works out. I understand completely. Corey Perry. He, Corey Perry, of course. St. Louis, He's, I guess, too. St. Louis was a big player for Lightning. And he was big. And Stan Corey was slumped. He stepped it up. But Daniel Sedin. That uh, one is like, he, really? Is, do, do they just give it to him by default because he got the Art Ross? I mean, how does that even... I don't see that. His team had the goal in it. He wasn't... The, I see it this way. I see it. If you take Corey Perry out of a... Uh, Anaheim Ducks, they do not make the playoffs. No. You take Daniel Sedin out, I think the Vancouver Canucks still make it. You take St. Louis out, I think the Tampa Bay Lightning, they'll squeak in. They'll still make the playoffs. I think maybe a 6 or 7 seed. But they completely snubbed Jonathan Taves and Mark andre Fleury, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Without those two on their team, those teams do not make the playoffs. Yeah, it's Crosby and Walker both gone and had a big injury probably. The whole team. The whole team. They, they, they had call-ups. Call right. had call-ups. And it's true. They have to call people up from the ECHL team to play in the AHL because all the AHL the players Flurry were the not the Penguins goalie. They're not in the playoffs. All right, now we're not going to completely look over Brent Johnson. Brent Johnson was good early in the season when Flurry went one and six, but he's not a number one goalie. He's not a number one goalie. He hasn't been for many years since he was with the Blues. So he hasn't been the top guy mostly since then. And to throw him in there, he was good in the early in the season, but. Half the season, 42 games, is how long Crosby and Malkin have been out, roughly. I don't think you know, the thing was made. You didn't carry Price. Okay, yeah. that was a good one. I was looking at that, and I was like, wow, they put St. Louis over Carey Price. Even Carey Price, and I'm not a huge Carey Price fan. I don't hate him, but I'm not a huge fan. I think Flurry, Carey Price, and Chase is a better third round. He played 70 plus games. Time 70 plus, do and who does that? Alex Ald was the backup. He didn't get many games. So to not give it to them... I think the NHL completely snubbed those two players. Uh, we're going to move on to the Vezina, though. They did agree with me on this one. They put Tim Thomas, Pekka Rene, and Roberto Longo. And I say Thomas is going to win that one. Yeah. I think that's Tom- a natural consistency that Thomas has. There's not to be a mathematical award. Yeah. That's that. Thomas has the best stats. He's got that award, the basket. All right, we're going to go to the caller. They have Jeff Skinner, Logan Couture, and Michael Bradner. Those were my original picks, and that's where NHL agreed with me on it. I'm saying Skinner gets it, but Couture, I wouldn't be shocked if you got it. I think Skinner's going to get it, but, I mean, I want to see John Carlson in there because he stepped up a lot when when Mike Green was gone, played every single game, Iron Man. But I agree with this. I think Skinner's going to win it. Couture is going to win for his money. Uh, But I think it's going to go with Skinner. Um, I'm not sure about Grabner. He's in, the, he's in the Islanders. Only reason I threw Grabner in there, and I guess the only reason the Islanders threw in there, because he got 30 goals. As a rookie, that's big for anybody. So, Couture, he got 30 goals too, and Skinner, I think he just barely got the 30 goals, and he had 60 plus points. So, I'm, I'm giving that to Skinner. But uh, we're going to move on to the James Norris. We got some more snubs. Uh, I had Wisnowski, Lidstrom, and Yandel. I had Wisnowski winning it. They disagreed, and they went with Lidstrom, Weber, Char. Now, Char- Weber, that's a good choice. I agree with that. That's a good to make him dominate. Back to first, uh, to win it. But uh, Lidstrom is also a good choice. Char, I don't, I don't, I, I didn't see him being. Yeah, he's big, but he can't get an award just for being big. That's I don't know what happened with that one. But Char's year. Remember one thing about his year. Yeah. Also Late in the him. season, Pacioretty, Ray, Stanchion. Bad news. And well, these he's, he's done enough to really the se- he's been solid, but not not good enough to be run over our two better candidates yeah. for the award. All right, uh, the selfie award, best defensive forward. I had Kessler, Doc, Suit, and Taves. The NHL agree with me. Those are the nominees. I'm going to go Kessler. I'm saying Kessler too. He had a 40 goal season. That's pretty good. And and last year I didn't even know who he was as far as goal scoring. Now he's putting up 40 goals. Yeah. Fits the best back in that too. So 40 goals and still be back in your end. That's that's talent right there. 
All right, Jack Adams. I had uh, Bausma, Vigneault, and Boucher. Now, they didn't agree with the Boucher one, but they did put Bausma, Vigneault, and uh, Barry Trotz in Nashville. Now, I'm going to go Bausma on this one because I could agree Nashville, if Trotz were to win it, I'd still be a little uh, sketchy on it, Lane but it wouldn't be too much of a shocker. With Elaine Vigneault, all that talent there, and yes, they, their defense went through some trouble with injuries, he but the goal play. scores were there all year. I don't think that Vigneault deserved The team got him that nomination. Yeah. He had nothing to do I with it. I think they cannot put Bruce Joe in there. True, they could have did that because he changed the whole system midseason, and they ended up being the number one seed. So, and, and Bilesma lost two top guys, ten regular forwards, call-ups, Goaltending, iffy in the early season. These are better nominees, but the Vigneault one just kind of throws me off. Took the team and... Took the team. Changed it up. Still got top three in the conference. So, in NHL, I don't know what goes on. And these votes are put in before the regular season is over. So, it's not playoffs getting any idea into it. So, uh, I don't know what happened with that one. All right, for the first round, my uh, Stanley Cup favorites were the Vancouver Canucks, the Philadelphia Flyers, and the Washington Capitals. But after the Philadelphia Flyers, I want to say they choked in that first round. They should have got past the Buffalo Ryan Millers faster than they did. And I do think Ryan Miller had a big part in that game going against yeah, Buffalo Ryan Millers. The Buffalo Ryan Millers. All right, so after the way they, they played, I dropped them on my list, and I moved the Washington Capitals up to my number second uh, spot for being the Stanley Cup favorite. What do you got for us? I agree with you there. The Flyers should have taken the two of the Sabres. I mean, I didn't think they were going to sweep them the or five game them, but six games should have been enough to be fast. scoring goals, and they didn't have Roy for the most of the Roy, he came series. in for the last game, so and you can't expect him to put up huge numbers after missing pretty much the whole season. most of the season. He went out in December, halfway through December. So uh, I'm still saying it's going to be Vancouver and... Washington. I'm going to say Vancouver and Washington. I just want to add to the captain going in. How many games? I'm going five games. I'd say five or six. At least. I don't know who's winning it. Uh, I haven't decided a winner. I haven't pitched one since even the first round, but I think Vancouver's definitely going, and now I'm I saying think the six, six are going games. To win. Six games? The Caps are going to win it on home ice. That would be nice. That's That would be nice. So we're going to go. We're both in agreement. Vancouver versus Washington. More than four games. All right, but we're not going to say seven games. Seven games. Okay. All right, that's what we got for it. We're going to talk about the scheduled game ones. Round one Eastern Conference semifinals, what do you got? Okay, for Washington at Tampa Bay, at Washington Bay, at NDC, Biden Center, tonight at 7 o'clock p.m. on versus TSN. If you're in D.C., if you're in Comcast. True. Then we have Philadelphia hosting Boston. Tomorrow, April 30th, 3 o'clock p.m., NBC, and CBC in Canada. Then we jump to the West. Last night was kicked off between the Vancouver Canucks and Rogers Arena versus the Nashville Predators. Uh, that was going to be on CSC, CBC and Versus for the rest of the series. Their next game is Saturday, April 30th, in Vancouver, 9 p.m. Then we got the second see San Jose Sharks at HP Pavilion taking on the Detroit Red Wings. It's going to start tonight, Friday, April 29th. In uh, San Jose, 10 o'clock, TSN and Versus. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you in the, let's say, conference finals. There we go.